Alright, in this video, I'll be taking you through the top 20 things you must do after installing Debian 12 Bookworm. This is not another video talking about the obvious things like changing the wallpaper. No, I'll be sharing practical steps that'll make your computer perform better, your internet speed faster, your laptop battery last longer and give you many more realistic improvements that'll allow you to get the best possible experience out of your Debian installation. Every time I install Debian or any other Linux distro, I spend the first 15 minutes tweaking some things up. Linux is extremely powerful and with some tweaks here and there, it all gets so much better. The following 20 things will supercharge your Debian experience. So let's jump right in. Before we do anything here, it's important that we are running the latest of all the packages. Even though you installed the latest system, there will be some updates available. So let's check for and apply these updates. But before that, let's enable the Debian online repositories. By default, Debian will not download or update software from its online repositories. It'll only allow us to install software from the installation media. So we'll be limited to a certain number of packages and we won't have access to updated packages. So we need to change it. Search for software and updates from the menu and open this. Here select the first four sources. Close the window and when prompted click on reload. Once done open a terminal and type in su Press enter and fill in your password to gain administrative privileges. Then run apt upgrade. You can copy paste these commands from the description below. This will check for updates and install the latest packages. Once this is done, restart your computer. Now it's time to enhance the functionality of your brand new Debian installation with some fantastic applications. You can open the software store and browse. We also get synaptic package manager here. It gives you full control over package management on Debian. You can use that too to install software. Then we can install apps directly from the terminal too. Here we'll be installing some must have apps from the terminal. Let's get VLC media player, game for image editing, gparted for disk management, Zero ED which is a fun game that I enjoy playing and Alien Arena which is a fast paced shooter that's a lot of fun. I have a video of the top 15 must have Linux applications which you'll find really useful. I've shared some amazing ones there, so make sure to check it out too. Alright, this one is my favorite. This is going to make your computer perform so much better. Everybody has some favorite applications that they use more than other applications. Your favorite browser, the IDE you use for development and many more. Now Preload is an intelligent daemon that observes which applications you use the most and keeps them in memory even before you open them. Let's say you use Firefox browser a lot. When you click on the Firefox app icon, an ample amount of time is needed for the application to be read from the hard disk and loaded into memory. With preload enables, your computer already knows you use Firefox a lot, so it's already kept in the memory. Click on the icon and bam, there it is. Preload makes your computer very responsive. Just think about it. The computer will have to read and load the application from the hard disk when you click on the icon anyway. Why not do it before itself? If you have 8 gigs or more RAM, Preload will do wonders for your app startup times. All you need to do is install it. Open a terminal, become root with su and run apt install preload. That's it. You don't need to do anything more. No configuration, no tuning up, everything will be automatic. Continue using your computer. Preload will need some time to learn which apps you use the most so you'll see results after some time. Remember, only the apps you use the most and more frequently will become faster, not all apps. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Next up, we are going to go ahead and install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers for boosted performance. This step is only for people who have an NVIDIA GPU. If you have an Intel integrated or AMD GPU, you can skip this step as drivers for both these come pre-installed in Debian 12. Alright, NVIDIA drivers. First, you have to add non-free repositories to Debian as the drivers we are installing are proprietary drivers. But these drivers bring a huge boost in performance so I highly recommend you use these. 
run cat at c apt sources dot list to make sure this line is present here. You can copy paste the command from the description below. If you don't find this line here, then run the next two commands in the description to add the lines. Debian by default provides only open source software and to get non-free software, you need this. Once done, update the software cache with apt update and install NVIDIA drivers with the following command. Once the download and install completes, you need to restart your computer. Then open the NVIDIA application and verify that the system is using NVIDIA proprietary drivers. You will in fact feel your system respond in a smoother way, especially the app grid and activities overview. While the open source drivers are good enough, installing the proprietary drivers really makes a difference in the performance. And if you want to get some gaming done on this system, installing these proprietary drivers is an absolute must. As I always say, there's no excuse for not having a backup. And Timeshift backup is something that every Linux user must have. Timeshift is a very powerful software. It has the capacity to restore your system from the worst of crashes and mess ups. It can even restore your operating system even if you completely delete your system. It's that powerful. And having this enables us Linux users to tinker under the hood and play with the inner workings of Linux without worrying about breaking the system. And now that we have our system set up, it's time to make a backup. Install Timeshift by running apt install Timeshift. You need to be root for this operation. Copy paste the commands from the description below. Once it is done, open it. You have two options in the backup type. Keep asking checked and click on next. It will estimate your system size and then you will be asked to choose the location to store your backup. You can choose any partition, even the partition you have installed the system. Totally fine. But I suggest you format a pen drive to ext4 and backup to that. That way, even if you literally format your entire hard drive or burn it, you can get back your system to this current state with time shift. I'm not kidding. Click next. Here you can set up automatic backups. You have various frequencies. I recommend monthly backups. But this manual backup is going to be very important as we are backing up a completely set up system that has all the drivers and all the software we need. We can roll back to this snapshot and get a fully working system. It'll be almost like a fresh install, but with all our software and drivers. Click next here. And on this page, click on create. This will create a backup of the system obviously, which you can roll back to any moment you want. I want to make it clear that Timeshift does not backup your personal files like your documents, photos and projects by default. It's a system backup tool. In case you break your operating system or any future update breaks your system, you can restore your system to this particular moment with Timeshift. It's a great tool and it has saved my system innumerable times. I strongly recommend this. We get a huge selection of software from the official Debian repositories. You can open up the software store or synaptic package manager here and download the software. But additionally, supplementing flat packs to your Debian system gives you access to a humongous library of modern apps. Flat packs are containerized apps that are isolated from your system and bring enhanced privacy and security. They are also packaged along with their dependencies, so they run flawlessly and you never face any dependency issues with flat packs. You also get the latest version of all the software with Flatpak. This one advantage makes Flatpaks infinitely more compelling on a Debian system. Debian provides a software in slightly older version numbers because it prioritizes stability over cutting edge tech. With Flatpak, we get the best of both worlds. The latest and greatest of all the software on top of an ultra stable base. To enable Flatpaks, open up a terminal and run the following commands. Then restart your computer and you'll see new Flatpak apps in your software store. You can choose between flatpaks and .deb packages using this dropdown. Dark mode is all the hype today and it finally makes its debut on Debian. Yes, Debian 12. This is the first time we see GNOME's dark mode here. You can quickly toggle dark and light modes using this quick switcher. With GTK4 and libadvaita, all the apps respond to this dark mode and you get gorgeous and uniform looking apps and system. We also get these dynamic wallpapers which react to modes. Select any of the wallpapers that have the split thumbnails and you'll see these stunning changes in colors when you switch modes. This dark mode also applies to most of the websites when using the Firefox browser. I absolutely love this. Both light as well as dark modes look super polished here. You can rock your choice. GNOME Desktop Search is one of the most powerful aspects of this desktop. You can search for apps, files, your contacts, calendar entries, do calculations and do a lot more here. 
Pressing the super or the windows button calls up this supercharged search and I personally use this for everything. Fine tuning how this search works, what kind of results you get here, it takes your productivity to the next level. Open the settings and click on the search tab. Here you'll be able to turn off specific search results. I mean if you don't need passwords and weather information, just turn it off. For example, I don't need contacts, characters, clocks, software suggestions from the software store and a few more items here. I just need to be able to open applications and files from here and also do quick calculations. That's good enough for me so that's what I'll use. Configure this once and it'll be useful to you forever. We spend so much of our time on our browsers. Today all our apps have moved online and we live our life online. Firefox is my default browser because it's awesome. And I'll show you two tweaks that'll make it even more awesome and faster. The GPU on your computer will be pretty much idle most of the time. GPUs are extremely powerful for certain kinds of tasks like rendering, far far better than the CPU. But by default, browsers on Linux use the CPU to do most of the work. While this is fine, it's not the best possible web browsing experience you can get. You paid for that GPU, let's put him to work. You'll see significant improvements. First, let's enable hardware acceleration. Open Firefox and type in about colon config and hit enter. Click on accept. Here, paste this line from the description below and toggle this from false to true. This will enable hardware acceleration on your computer which is set to false by default on Linux. This alone will give you much smoother animations and scrolling. Your PC will handle larger websites much easily now. You can check out the performance difference by playing some online games or just scrolling on YouTube. But that's not all. Let's take it one more step by turning on web render. Paste this in the about config page and toggle the value to true just like you did the first one. You need to restart your browser to see improvements. Of course, if you get any kind of negative effects, you can just turn them both back to false. Now it's time to bump up your internet speed with an optimized DNS. When you type in a website URL and hit enter, you might have noticed that there is a short gap before the actual website starts to load. During this time, the actual IP address of the website you requested will be getting resolved. This might take a short time, medium amount of time or a long time based on the DNS that your internet provider is using for you by default. Now you might have a very high speed internet. We are not talking about the download or upload speeds here. Simply put, we are talking about the time it takes to connect to a website and this can be improved significantly by changing the DNS. We are talking stellar, noticeable improvements here. Let's get into it. Open the Wi-Fi settings and click on the gear or the cog icon of your Wi-Fi connection. In the IPv4 section, turn off the automatic toggle and in this text box, paste the numbers from the description below. Then do the same thing for the IPv6 section. We are going to use Google DNS which is really good. It's reliable and resolves IP addresses very fast. I've used many custom DNS and Google and Cloudflare DNS tend to work the best. I prefer the Google one. Apply the settings and turn off the Wi-Fi and turn it back on. Enjoy a faster internet connection. GS Connect is KDE Connect re-implemented for the GNOME desktop. GS Connect lets you pair your smartphone and tablet, both Android and iPhone, and share files with each other, remote control your computer with your phone, use your phone as media remote control, use your PC to handle messages, and do so much more. GS Connect is not just an additional app, it's a GNOME extension that deeply integrates with the system and becomes a part of your operating system. And this deep integration is very important and gives you that baked in feel. Yeah, it feels like this feature is a part of the system and this also materializes in the quick toggle section and lets you work with your phone so conveniently and quickly. GS Connect is definitely a must have extension for GNOME and one of the best mobile companion apps. You can install it by following the instructions given in the description below and turning it on from the extensions page. You need to download the KD Connect mobile app on your phone. Pairing is quick and simple. We get the GNOME desktop environment here and it has its own way of getting things done. GNOME lets you pin a number of applications to the dash at the bottom of the screen. This lets you quickly get to those apps. Remember, a single tap on the windows or the super button brings up these favorites and a double tap brings up the entire app drawer. So yeah, getting to these apps is way faster. So it makes sense to pin our favorites and frequently used apps here. You can either drag and drop your apps here or right click on the app icon and add to favorites. GNOME lets you connect your desktop to major online services like Google and Microsoft and sync your data. I personally always connect to my Google account as it gives me really cool features like Google Drive integration in files here. Calendar, contacts and photo sync which are all really amazing. I use an Android phone so I'm deep in that Google ecosystem. 
getting drive access in the file manager here and getting all my calendar and mail notifications and access here really simplifies life for me. In settings, go to online accounts, select the service and then log in with your credentials. Then you can choose what all is synced. Really neat. Research has shown that staring at screens later in the evening and night significantly reduces your sleep quality and quantity. This done on a regular basis can be detrimental to your health and mental health. Looking at bright screens and lights at night confuses your circadian rhythms. While absolutely stopping screen time near bedtime will do wonders for your sleep quality and your mood and alertness the next day, it's not always practical for many people. But science has the next best thing. With nightlight, your computer screen starts to change to warmer colors as the sun starts going down. This significantly promotes melatonin production in your body. You fall asleep faster, you sleep deeper. Trust me, you gotta try to feel it. I enabled nightlight on my computer, my android phone and even my bedroom light. I kid you not, the difference in my sleep quality has been astronomical. Definitely try this one. If you're on a laptop, then one thing you'd appreciate for sure is a better battery life, no matter how good or bad it currently is. Linux based operating systems are not specially known for their battery life, but this little tool called TLP can help. TLP is a power management utility that tweaks certain aspects of the operating system to improve the battery life when your laptop is disconnected from a power source. TLP is very powerful and it automatically optimizes background tasks, processor frequency, Wi-Fi, USB and other power saving modes. It comes with the best configuration for power saving on battery and performance when connected to a charger. So all you have to do is install it and it'll handle everything by itself. Open a terminal, become root with the su command and run apt install TLP. Enjoy an improved battery backup. If you're using a modern laptop, there's a good chance that your screen resolution is either 1080p or more. While this makes the display look crisp and detailed, it can also make text and other elements look smaller to the eye. It can make things difficult to read. This is pretty much not a problem on desktops, but on laptops, the smaller the screen size, more of an issue this is. To overcome this, we'll go ahead and adjust the scaling factor. Open the tweaks application from the menu and switch to the fonts tab. Here you can play around with the scaling factor option to make the fonts bigger so that you can read comfortably. On small laptop screens, a factor of 1.15 to 1.25 gives the best results. But go ahead and adjust it to a value where you can sit at a good distance from the screen and read text comfortably. Gaming on Linux has grown to astronomical levels. A good number of major games are available natively on Linux now. And now, with Steam's Proton feature, a majority of Windows exclusive games like The Witcher 3, GTA 5, Cyberpunk 2077, Doom Eternal and many more are playable on Linux. That too without any wine or play on Linux hassle. You just enable Steam Play and click on install. The games install and run like they are Linux native. So yeah, Steam is a must have for both gaming enthusiasts and for casual gaming. You can install Steam using the instructions in the description below and get gaming. Check out ProtonDB to know which Windows games run fine here. Debian has been created to suit everybody's computational needs and preferences. It comes with very sane defaults and while the optimized default settings are great, they may not be necessarily optimized for you and you can make your system more to your liking. Open settings, the most important thing you should be doing is changing the wallpaper. Debian's wallpapers are not the most beautiful and it needs to be changed. There, I said it. You can manage your notifications, adjust the privacy settings, tweak the search, there's so much more here. Just take your time and explore everything. Alright, now that our system has been optimized in pretty much every way, it's time to clean it up and start using it. Although Linux systems don't need any kind of housekeeping or maintenance, cleaning it a couple of times every year can be beneficial. Not necessary, but definitely beneficial. For this, we'll use the good old BleachBit. Install it by running apt install BleachBit, become root first. Restart your computer if you applied any updates before you run BleachBit. Open BleachBit as root and check the entries here. If you get warnings on any tick, just click on cancel. And once it is done, you can preview the junk on your system and clean it. You can also run BleachBit without root to delete application and browser junk. Run this every 6 months or so and you'll feel your computer get instantly more responsive. Alright, now that you have set up your brand new Debian system to be functional and optimized in every way possible, it's time to enjoy it. Debian is a fantastic operating system and it's a platform that lets you do anything and everything in a simple and enjoyable way. Work, play, do it all. 
Debian 12 is an impressive operating system. With this version, Debian becomes more relevant than ever before. With new versions of all the desktop environments, Debian is very usable. It also brings the much needed updates to all the packages and now we get access to more than 60,000 packages with Debian 12. Debian is the universal operating system. It's the proverbial mother of operating systems with many top distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Zorin OS, MX Linux, Pop OS and many others directly or indirectly based on Debian. That's testament enough to understand how big of a deal Debian is. So go ahead and enjoy it. You have watched the video till this point. So it's understood that you are very passionate about Linux. So make sure to check out my course Linux Mastery Express which I've designed after teaching more than 100 students. Linux Mastery Express is created to teach you a set of powerful Linux commands working with the vEditor and shell scripting in a fast track way. It's the quickest way to level up your Linux game. You'll start using Linux like a pro within a very short amount of time. And if you like my way of talking on point, you'll absolutely love the course. Definitely check it out. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. Also, tell me which of the 20 things in this video you like the most. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. So use the comment section below. Next up, check out the top 7 hottest Linux distros of 2023. I've got some really cool ones there, so don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.